Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about generative AI. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, would you say that generative AI is already starting to impact development roles given the number of layoffs this year in top tech companies despite great quarter results? Nope, I would say not. So again this is the sort of thing that it, 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 it these are questions that I would say are asked by people who don't actually know how it is to work in any type of software organization so guys in case you haven't noticed just because a company is doing really well in terms of the quarters and so forth and so forth as I've said before guys you're mistaking the overall success of an organization for just success in every department. If you're laying off people, there's usually a reason for that. And in this case, it's not that the code is being write, written by AI. If there was a single company, guys, that had such such a handle on generating software or like using generative AI that they could lay off people, they would be promoting that as much as humanly possible because that is a big feather in the hat if you can make that happen because basically I would say go as far to no company has done that to the extent that we're talking about there are situations where this is not true uh, my favorite example is and I keep on telling the software developer, you're the ones who are running around being worried that you're going to be replaced the people who are being replaced the actual people who are being replaced are usually the concept designers or people who like where you can use uh, mid journey or, or dolly or similar sorts of things to create concept art or so forth and so forth because that is something that is much closer to being in line with what we can do today but generating entire code bases or generating and supporting all the systems and so forth as I uh, I keep on telling you guys, if you don't know the work, if you don't understand that you're basically as a software developer trying to understand the needs of the company, the needs of your stakeholders and basically translating all of their non quote unquote nonsensical requirements that would make absolutely no sense to an AI. It doesn't matter how uh, they can sit and prompt as much as they want. They will never be able to express the level of complexity we're talking about and then have that translate into a working system without any bugs and then you know if something does happen how do you fix that. No one that is not a software developer at this point will have the skills necessary to deal with such a situation. In theory, yes, you can use generative AI to help you out to write the code, but you still have to know what the code says, because otherwise you have no idea if it's going to work or not. And I promise you this, if you're going to do trial and error, because I use these tools myself, I use ChatGPT as much as I can, it's my, my favorite way of figuring out some syntax that I forgot about in a specific language or adding, like creating a simple script that is going to traverse a bunch of files, something that is a completely standard problem. But I won't be able to help have it do my work for me. If I could, I would already be doing it. But it, because if I do, I won't actually get through the pull request. I won't actually, you know, be, go in, be able to ship something to production. So the fact that you are associated with these two is, in my opinion, the sort of proof of the bias that you have towards AI. One part is ignorance that you think that it can do things that it cannot do at this point without serious assistance from a human. All these AIs you hear about who win coding competitions and so forth, guys, they're not winning without a human. They need a human to help them. You can put in the requirements, you can help it debug, you can do all of these things, but it needs a feedback cycle of some sort. And that feedback can is not from an ignorant person, as I say to people. This time you can really get to be a little bit afraid if for your future and so forth, is when an individual who has no expertise within the thing that you are doing or the thing that you are providing, the service they're providing, and have them just ask the AI and get exactly the results that they are looking for, or basically without a lot of effort. Which is, as I said, if you're looking at prompt engineering and the things that people are doing now with AI art and like uh, visual things and so forth, that is feasible. It's not as, you know, you're never, you, you may or may not think about it, but it's easier, for, it's pretty straightforward in terms of if you just want something, not something super complicated or specific, you can ask an, a generative AI to create an image or a visual effect or something like that for you. And if you're happy with that, it's a little bit like buying WordPress or something like that. You're not going to get maybe a, 
the best possible result, but it might be perfect for your needs. But when it comes to software, that is simply not feasible without having any type of coding knowledge yourself. So what I think is happening here is, as, you, as I said, the same applies to men, the mentality about when people think about war, countries going to war against each other. Oh, it's, uh, you know, this big country versus this small country. Clearly the big country is going to win because the small country has no chance, etc., etc. The reality is that if you look historically, like just a few hundred years back or like during the past decades, uh, sorry, centuries, the wars that are fought with it doesn't really matter as much whether or not it's a big country or not. It's still a battle that you don't just go in and win and steamroll the whole situation. It's a serious investment. In many cases, it doesn't actually change much. If you look at the situation with, say, Vietnam, or you look at how it went for the US in Afghanistan, uh, and you look at say, Ukraine versus Russia and things like that, it's much more complicated than that a lot more complicated. It's not just a, a steamroll win. It's the same thing with uh, revenue for big companies. If you're, you have a great quarter making tons of money, that doesn't mean that you don't have an inefficient departments or cost waste uh, like uh, or revenue wasters that you can cut from the organization. A classic one, if you talk about the US, you have shareholders and they expect more return on their investments. Therefore, you have to fire a bunch of people even if it's going really, really well because you're simply not making enough money. You're making you're making profits, but not so much that your big investors or people who like have expectations on uh, uh, return on investment and things like that, they might just go, yeah, that, it's great, we're doing really well, but we should really focus on getting even more money. Because it's not just about making money, it's about making enough money that so that everybody is happening in the organization. And this is why I tell software developers to think about, oh, should I stay at this tiny company because you know I'm more important in that company versus a big company? It's very difficult to say. Basically, what I tell you is that I've been in large corporations during quite a few times where it's been layoffs and things like that. One, uh, once or twice, I've been in the department that got. Uh, downscale like we lost our jobs due to outsourcing or like they're moving it to some other department that the company was still making tons and tons and tons and tons of money they laid us off because it was a cost effective thing for them to do even though they were on in the green and I've been in companies where they were also laying people off and then I was in the right department they fired tons and tons of people but not in my department so this idea that you can predict how to safeguard yourself of being laid off or being in the right place and so forth it's a very tricky game to play and I think that you are making a mental mistake when you basically credit some piece like in this case it's AI like how can I don't even understand how you make this connection that generative AI would be the reason why people are being laid off in the big corporations. Have you read anywhere that Google is replacing their staff with generative AI? If you were seeing those sorts of headlines, I would understand your reasoning. But on as far as I know, none of the big corporations are going around bragging about how they can lay off a hundred people and just replace them with a bunch of AI uh, uh, models. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, I don't think that AI or generative AI is impacting your job, the jobs or so forth and so forth. The reason being because had that been the case, then the, there would be tools right now that were able to help me in my own work and any of my coworkers. And I don't know a single software developer who, yeah, sure, we use Copilot, we use GPT, ChatGPT and so forth and so forth. And if you ask any of them, can you go and take a coffee break and have the uh, have Copilot finish up your code for you? They're gonna just laugh at me and say, no, of course not. No, because it's not at that stage yet. It might get there somewhere or someday, but we're not there now. So if you were to have that sort of AI gen revolution happening somewhere, I would have expected more than a few companies making a very big deal of that because that is literally the, dr the wet dream of capitalist society to be able to basically have for free labor in something that is extremely lucrative and has almost no cost in comparison to how you would have to budget things if you had like materials and manufacturing and things like that. So this idea that you think that people are being laid off and that's weird just because the companies are doing really well, you, then I don't think you understand basic economics. I think that you are mistaking, as I said, that yeah, a big corporation is making a lot of money, therefore they will just keep everybody around. No, they're trying to optimize for cost. 
and they're trying to maximize profits and those profits is not being handed down to the workers that yeah my company's doing really well therefore I will keep my job you can have ineffective departments or departments that you want to get rid of because you don't see a future in that specific investment and so forth and so forth there's a million reasons why you might lose your job even in the biggest economic boom that you can imagine so you're associating things going well for the corporation or the company with oh everybody's safe or things are going not so well therefore everybody's in at risk no that's not how it works it's the same thing with economy in a country or so forth and so forth or uh, when you're dealing with wars and so forth you're you're treat you're simplifying things to a point where you're basically associating some arbitrary thing like how much money or like uh, how big the country is or things like that with absolute win landslide win in a war or in a corporation everything's going really well therefore everybody's job is safe no that's not how it works all it takes is for the right board member to say yeah actually I don't see a future in this department let's cut it because we can take that money and put it somewhere where it makes more money for us they are not trying to keep everybody employed guys they are trying to figure out how to position the company to maximize revenue and that is a very different game from uh, from you know we are doing well therefore we keep everybody versus we are not doing so well therefore we're firing everybody have a great day